should have caught up with that wedding thing today. They camped here last night, Martha. We'll catch up with them tomorrow, all right? I hope so. Hello, boys. You'll be a man before you know it. What am I doing now? Great. Oh, you just came along and play. I don't want to play. Hurt. You've got to play. If you want to do something, you can... Look! My name is Knox, John Knox. Glad to know you, Mr. Knox, and glad to meet your charming wife and your happy family. Now, allow me to offer you a prospectus of our new patent, high pressure, hollow ground, steel and gray, rigid frame, ball bearing windmill. Each one guaranteed to toss 3,000 gallons of hot water, cold water, any kind of water, over the tallest tree that ever grew on the banks of the Swanee River far away. Windy's my name, windmill's my business. And now I'll be glad to take your order. I don't need a windmill. Well, now, let me show you. I also carry a sideline of brooms and mops, mops, kittles and tails, uh, shooting irons, scalping knives. Government offers a bounty of $10 each on hostile Indian scalps. Now, here is a scalping knife invented by a fellow by the name of Bowie. Guaranteed to do the job just as slick as skin in the eyes out of a potato. Even a baby can use them. No scalping knife. Then what about some, uh, some liver pills, spices, epicac, rattlesnakes to oil, or epsom salt? Or maybe some nice Billy hair tonic, or some bear grease, flavored with all the perfumes of Arabia? Or maybe I could sell you some nice New England rum for snake bites, or some pine Virginia stogie? Now what about one of my new patent lightning rods? Say, them kids of yours look kind of peaked. What about some of my ground pumpkin seed worm medicine? Guaranteed to do the trick like magic. We've got everything we need. Well, that's my business. Chicken today, feathers tomorrow. Well, if I can't sell something, I always make it a prank to give something away. Here, boy. Here's a fine hunk of candy for each of What's the matter? What's the matter? Just a minute. Give me room. Give me room. Give me room. Up. Oh, there. Now. Just a second, son. Open up. Wider. Wider. Ah, just as I thought. What's the matter? This boy's got a tooth that needs to come out. Now, I'm the last tooth full of this side of the Rocky Mountains, and I'll do the job for just one dollar. What do you say? Then you'd better snake it out. Now, open your mouth and shut your eyes, and I'll give you something to make you wise. Close the little eyes, East. Ah! Ah! There you are, Sonny. And it didn't hurt a mite, did it? Yes! Ah! Open up. The wrong tooth. I'll try again. No! <laughs> my brother, then I'll kill you. Hey! Stop that! Take that gun away from him. It might go off. Don't do that, Ace. You must never say that again. Well, I gotta be going. Here's the dollar. Oh, thank you. Well, goodbye. When did you leave St. Joe? Yesterday. We missed the wagon train. We hope to catch up with it tomorrow. Well, pretty risky, I call it. What with these planes full of Indians and desperate characters. Well, good luck, Mr. Knox. Well, good luck to you. Giddy up there, Damon. Giddy up, Pythias. Asa, you're so little. You're hardly big enough to understand. But our Lord gave us a commandment. Thou shalt not kill. But now we're getting close. Come, children. 
the little prayer that I taught you. It's our only prayer, children, and no one else has one just like it. Now then, if I should die before the night, if I should die before the night, I ask our Lord, With all my might, with all my might, to take my soul, take my soul, and keep it fast, keep it fast, until I see his face at last, until I see his face at last. Eh? I think I'll keep them. I hit the horses. Clear the wagon. Get off the trail. I nearly take the apron. No, Mom. Not even a foot track. I guess he's dead. No, kid. Asa isn't dead. Perhaps it'd be better for him if he was with your paw. Come on, Mom. The long way back to St. Joe. We'll get there, somehow. Ah, ah, good morning, gents. Permit me to offer you a prospectus of our new patent, high-pressure, hollow ground, steel and gray, rigid frame, ball bearing windmill. Each one guaranteed to... Mrs. Knox. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Has the stage arrived yet? I'm expecting my father. Not yet. Now allow me to offer you a catalog. Has that bunch of arrived from the rain? I'm looking for my son. Not yet. Now allow me to offer you a catalog. Here comes the stage now. Get out of the way, boy. Move back. Move back. Good morning, Mr. Crispin. Well, who is wrong, I see. <laughs> yes, sir, late. You know what? It's... Hello, honey. Oh, hello, Father. It's so good to have you home again. We came to meet you with the buggy. Oh, did you? Hello, Mark. Oh. oh, where's Clint? Well, Clint's bringing in some stock, Mr. Crispin. What about the California mail? Well, boys, it's decided. The Pony Express is going through. Wow. We've got to get the mail to California and get it there fast. Well, how are you going to do it? My firm, Majors, Waddell, and Russell are going to give this... We're going to get the mail from St. Joe to Sacramento in less than 10 days. 10 days? Why, you can't do that. It's, it's going to be done. Howdy, sir. I'm a reporter from the Missouri State Democrat. 
Would you mind giving me some details of your enterprise? Well, to begin with, we're going to call this service the Pony Express. The Pony Express? Well, that's a good thing to call it by. There'll be 190 stations spread across the country. We'll need 80 of the keenest and hardest riding men in the West for its riders, and 500 of the best-blooded American horses for its riding stock. That's... Say, here comes some of your stock now, Mr. Christman. <laughs> You look great. You look great yourself. Mm -mm. Sweet Snapple Jack right out of the barrel. Bye, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Christman. Hello, Clint. Hey, did you get what you went after in Washington? Yes, Clint. The Pony Express is going through. I want to talk to you about that. Right. I'd like to be the first to volunteer. <laughs> but first, you'd better round up that bunch of broom tails of yours and get them in the Overland Corrals before they kick this town to pieces. <laughs> I can ride at that. So you work on the Missouri State Cameron. Do you know a fellow that works on that paper for the name of Father, you wouldn't let Clint join the Pony Express. Well, why not? Why, because, well, just because. Oh. <laughs> well, that depends on whatever you and Martha say about that, honey. But I'm going to need men like Clint. You love Clint, don't you, Mary? You know I do. Yes, I guess I do. I loved his father. But the Pony Express is going to be dangerous. I don't like the idea of Clint going. No, Mary. We women of the West are not brave. Where our men go, we follow. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Well, come now and help me do the shopping, and we'll have a very special dinner for your father and Clint tonight. Now, my good people, the time has come when boats are going without sails. The time will come when wagons will go without horses, and when machines will skim through the air like birds. And in the meantime, what you need is bigger and better windmills. Hey, I bought one of your windmills, and it wouldn't work. Well, I guaranteed it to work on the Swanee River. Now, you take it back there, and if it don't work, you'll get your money back. <laughs> Just a minute, young man. Uh, can I interest you in one of our new windmills? <laughs> If I needed one, I'd just hire you and put you in a field and let you spout hot air. Now, see here, young man. Take your paw off of my shoulder. And don't ever do that again unless you want to find out what a period means. Here, hold this. If I thought he meant to insult me, I'd... Say, what did he mean by that? He means he punctuates his words with bullets, Windy. Pay for a Pony Express rider isn't high. It's 50 to $100 a month and found, depending on the danger of the route. Well, I'm asking for the hardest relay. What's your name? Ace Carter. How old are you? Well, I'm over 21, I reckon. 
Where are you from? Our Kansas country, around Fort Smith. Carry any credentials? Yeah, these. May I see them? Certainly. You're quite handy with your six guns. Well, I really didn't try. <laughs> what do you call that? Well, that's called the border roll. I sort of figured a man riding the Pony Express, six is full would be a good hand to draw to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I see. Of course, I didn't count the Indians. Well, I don't know. I've just about decided that I've been insulted. I'm a man of peace, but when I get my dander up, I'm a rip tail roll from Colorado Canyon. I'm a diamond back with ten rattles and a button. I'm a Gila monster, a two-tailed scorpion, a tarantula, all rolled up into one. I'm a curly wolf, and when I howl, wahoo, wahoo, wahoo! Wait a minute, don't shoot, don't shoot. Clint. Fella just went in there and insulted me. <laughs> he couldn't. If you was me, what would you do? If I didn't have a better shooting iron than that, I'd run. <laughs> I'm going to wait right here until he comes out, and then I'm going to percolate him. Hey, Wendy, throw it at him. You'll do better. <laughs> There's that South Pass running to Cheyenne. That's the one I'd like to have. That's the most dangerous stretch of country on the route. Why do you want that particular run? That's a man's job. And the rider will have to take a man's chances. That South Pass country is infested with outlaws. It is? I'd like to have a man on that relay I know a little more about. You may be a good rider, you may be handy with a gun. In fact, you might be just a little too quick on the trigger. Listen, Mr. Christmas. I don't know anything about you except what you've told me. I'd like a little time to think it over. When? Say, an hour. All right. I'll be around. And if you do throw out Adam Willie, be sure you don't miss him. <laughs> oh. Why don't you watch where you're going? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you. Well, I'll take a good look. You think you'll know me when you see me again? With that space? Why not? Seems to me you take up an awful lot of room for a young fellow. Any objections? Not if you'll step aside and let me through that door. when we came off the planes after... But I'm disappointed. I sort of figured on this. It isn't the money so much, but as being a part of the greatest thing that ever happened in the West. Express. It's too bad, Clint. I'd like to have it, but that's the way. I'll drive home, Mrs. Locke. Now you just get right in for us. Permit me, madam. There you are. Thank you, my boy. You're a stranger in St. Joe, aren't you? That's right. Where do you come from? Oh, Southwest. Well, thank you again. It's perfectly all right. You live hereabouts? I don't deaf and deaf. Oh, no, I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I can say to change your mind? No, Clint. But you'll be doing your part here, providing the stock for the Pony Express. 
Excuse me, George. Mom, Mr. Kristen won't give me that job I counted on. Why not? Well, partly on your account, and then there's Mary. George, the ponies is bigger than any woman or her son, or his sweetheart. Mary and I have talked that over, and we've decided. You've promised people of this nation something which they think is impossible, and you've got to make good on that promise. But it'll take the best men you can get. It, there'll be times when bravery and courage will carry on. And when the bodies of your men have stood more than human flesh can endure. When they'll have to ride through fire and flood. And over mountains and blazing deserts. But this war against time must be won. The mail must go through. And so, George, I'm asking you to give my son a chance. And if I had my other son... I'd gladly give him to. Flint, the son of such a mother won't fail upon the express. I'm going to enlist you here and now. To each rider of the Pony Express, the company gives one of these. A Bible? Yes. Will you repeat the words you'll find printed on the flyleaf? I do hereby swear that while I am in the employ of the Pony Express, I will be faithful to my duties and so direct all my acts as to keep the confidence of my employers. So help me God. Thanks, Mr. Christman. But what's the harm in telling me where you live? Why do you want to know? I'd like to come over and see you. I'm afraid you'd be wasting your time. Getting engaged. I might be able to make you change your mind. I don't think so. You see, I'm very much in love. Point. I just hired the first rider for the Pony Express. Congratulations, Pete. Back, boys. You bet. I bet it makes sure. See you later, Kate. See you later. Now then, men, I'm ready to take your applications in order. Come here, Clint. Well, now, you've got what you've always wanted. Meaning which? The kiss or the job? Clint! Don't worry, madam. I won't tangle with him while his women folks are around. Goodbye. He say anything to you, Mary? No, Clint, he didn't say anything. Get the horse, Clint, and we'll wait for you. All right, Mom. Well, Christman, make up your mind? Well, I've decided to give the run you asked for to another man. But perhaps we can get together on another run. No, thank you. <laughs> so you're one of those Sunday school fellas, eh? Might not do you any harm to learn something about this. Well, you've got my job, but I'll turn. It's all right with me. Maybe it won't be.
Just a few more miles, Parker. South Pass is only a relay station for the Pony Express, for a few scattered cabins. But it's going to be your future home. Yes, George. I think this country's beautiful. I think it's terrible.
Why, we could clear that road quicker than you could say he's the top of the top of the Dell. That's all right, Wendy, but what we, a little bit of what you got right there to help us clear this road. And I knew I'd busy. get into something. Now we'll be late getting in the South Pass. You're right, to see me, aren't you, Mary? Well, it's been a long time since I've seen him. And think how surprised you He didn't expect it for another month. Now, just boys, and I'll tell you how to do this. I'd be glad to help you, only I'm too light for heavy work. Now, wait a minute. Less wind and more brawn. Get to work. I guess we can cut around it now, can't we? Yeah, I can make it up now. Okay, now, my back is rolling again. Stand right one. And don't turn around. Now, that goes for anyone else. Who... Only the next time, I'll shoot the kill. Driver, throw that express box down on the other side. Hurry up. Passengers stand in close to the coach and drop your valuables on the ground and don't look back. Oh, woman, I told you not to look back. Get in that coach and get in quick. Hey, you mean help pick up that wounded messenger? Get going. What's the matter with the stage? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's broken axle. 
Let us hope that it's nothing worse. What do you mean, a hold up? Pony rider's late, too. I'll leave them on a minute. I knew, do you think I'd be standing here? Threw a jerk line across the gully and threw me like a steer. Never saw him at all. And that's funny. What's funny about it? Nothing except the stage being held up about the same time. No. Stage held up? Yes, and it looks like the same hombre done both jobs. He robbed me of $200. What did he look like? We never got a look at him. Well, get after him. Link him. You won't have to look very far. What do you mean? Oh, nothing in particular. Yes. Your mother saw him. Did you see his face, Mom? Yes. Could you identify him? Yes. Wait a minute, men. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, men. Wait a minute. Talk cheap. But you've got to get the man before you can hang him. And there'll be no lynching. Men who resort to lynch law are as sad as the outlaws themselves. I've been sent out here to put an end to this sort of thing. This man must be caught, yes. But he must be dealt with according to law. Did you get anything of yours, Mary? All I got for the ranch in Missouri. And he got me for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Johnny, I'll take this horse. You get a fresh horse, substitute for me, and ride to the next station. You can't do it, Clint. You've been in the saddle eight hours now. I'll go with you, Clint. No, you'd only hold me back. Oh, why don't you boys show Mom and Mary where my cabin is? That's Clint. I hope he brings back my $1,000. Huh? Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs>
right where you are. Right on your knees. I didn't miss you. What? What's holding you up? A miracle, perhaps. But you wouldn't understand what a miracle is. That saved your life? That saved many a man. You're not gonna... What do you think? Well, you think so much of that book, why don't you live by it? Ain't that the book that says, Thou shalt not kill? Yes. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you shoot? Why don't you get it over with? Take this. I wouldn't send any man so where yours is going without a chance. Open the cover. Read what you'll find there. I see his face at last. Well, yeah. That's it. Where did you hear that? I don't know. Some woman. Somewhere. Long time ago when I was a kid, maybe. Hey, hey. It's anger. What are you mumbling about? You afraid to kill? You afraid of this book? If you haven't got the nerve to do it, give me the gun and I'll do it myself. Get on your feet. Start walking. Start your horse. I guess you suspicion Clint wrong. Oh, is that so? Good work, Clint. What's the matter? Nothing, Mr. Piston. I think you better go for Jeff Beasley right away. You're right. Those men are in a dangerous mood. I can take care of them and him, too. So we get the law organized. They won't be long. We don't have to wait for Chris Munner or Judge Beasley either. You're right, Steve. We don't need the law. We know what to do. I allow all this will do the job when we get it under his left ear. Take care of this. Mother, watch him be tricky. Mary, you better go in too. What's the idea, boys? We'll thank you to push that road agent out the door. We aim to fit this nice little necktie on him, don't we, boys? I might as well give him a pinch. I hate to put a crimp in your little party. But you don't get him. Get out of our way, Clint. I wouldn't if I were you. He's bluffing. He wouldn't dare to. Steve, me 
Maybe he means it. He's bluffing. To the side, ain't we? Seven to one. Wait. You know, uh, that shot I cut uh, Steve's rope with was the last load of those pistols. Give them to me. Leave him with me for a few moments. But why? You've always done as I asked you to. Please. I think I understand. What's troubling you, Clint? I love you, Clint. I gave up a great deal to come here to be with you, to marry you and make a home for you. Don't you think I have the right to know? Yes, Mary. I think you have that right. There's, uh, there's something I didn't want to tell you, but that boy in there is my brother. And knowing that, you brought him in? It took a lot of courage to do that, Clint. Is there anything I can do for you before you have to go? No, ma'am. Are you afraid to die? Well, I can't exactly say I'm pleased about it. But I guess it has to happen. Today, tomorrow, sometime. There's someone you'd like to send some word to. I haven't got anybody to send any word to. Your mother, perhaps. Mother? If I had a mother, I don't guess she'd exactly be proud of me right now, would she? Oh, anything would be better than not knowing where you are, or whether you were alive or dead. If I were your son, would you want to know? Yes. Why did you do that? Because... Be my son. Oh, no. No, you're, you're dead wrong, ma'am. Your son's in there. I'm glad I didn't kill him. That little Bible that saved his life. And that prayer in it. It's a right pretty one, too. I wonder where I heard that before. I guess it doesn't matter. There'd be a lot of folks back in Missouri. Glad when that Pony Express brings word back that H. Carter's trumped his last trick. What did you say your name was? Ace. <laughs> it's all I've ever known. Yeah. Ace. Ace! 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 All ready, Clint. Bring the prisoner. You'll have to come too, Martha. You're the principal witness. <laughs> come on. 
on, Judge. All you got to do is pronounce him guilty and turn him over to us. Give him to us. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. By the authority invested in me by the federal government of the United States, <clears throat> I now declare this court to be in session. Prisoner, you are charged with being a road agent, robbing the U.S. mail and other unknown crimes, any of which are punishable by death. Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. First witness, take the stand. Hold up your right hand. Where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I do. Sit down. Is that the man that robbed the coach? I can't swear to it. I've never seen his face. Mm. Next witness. And I was frightened, so I didn't turn around to look at him. Well, I couldn't exactly swear, but if he is, he's the fellow that got my five thousand five dollars. The road agent had his guns on us from the back. He threatened to shoot if we turned around. I was afraid he might do that and hit one of the women, so I can't identify him positively. I was knocked from my horse and fell unconscious. I didn't actually see him rob the mail. Mrs. Knox, when the road agent held up the stage, you were the only one who saw his face. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Hunt, look at the prisoner. Is that the man? No. He's guilty, Judge, and we know it. What kind of a court is this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. What's the whole thing? According the law, our man's innocent until he is proven guilty. Hey, move! Wait a second, Judge. There's another witness. Huh? Well, what do you know? I saw that road agent before he winged me, and he rode a pinto horse. Pinto? Clint Knox rides the pinto horse. Hold on. Judge? I'm guilty. I did both jobs. I robbed the mail and stole his horse. The Pinto. Now I get you boys to go ahead and get it over with. All right, come on. Wait a minute. Huh? Before you do this thing, I've got something to say. This boy is my brother. Oh, oh, oh. And that's why my mother wouldn't identify him. And that's why I didn't kill him when I had him cornered in the Badlands. That's all right, Clint. We'll take care of that for you. Steve, seems to me you stood in this very spot not so many months ago with a rope around your neck. Accused of horse stealing. The boys hadn't given you a chance. Where would you have been? Well, they couldn't prove nothing. Maybe not. There's just as much excuse for my brother as there is for you. Perhaps more. Now, I'm not going to tell you fellas anything I can't prove. But I am going to tell you something you don't know. Aza and I were kids when our family crossed the plains. We were held up and robbed. Our father was murdered. Aza here was stolen by the outlaws. He never had the chance to learn the difference between right and wrong. That's true, boys. I happen to know. And me too. I'm not asking this chance for his sake, but for my own. But for the sake of our mother. She never had the chance. Or he would have learned the difference between right and wrong. If things had happened differently, I might have been on Ace Carter's boots. He might have been. Well, I. Uh, <coughs> well, I to... how do we know if we certainly won't do the same thing right over again? You have my word. And mine. I'll find a job for you. All right, Casey. Oh, Look, boy, it's the Pony Express. 